about um mod a so mod a language identity and culture and again the syllabus just gives you so much so language is a system of communication you guys know i'm sure you did this in class and identity is just how we exp express ourselves and our individuality and culture is a way of life of a particular group of people at a certain time and place and how um, they're living out their beliefs and values perspectives is literally how we see the world perceptions is the views which are gained by the responser by the responder and self-perception is how we view and understand ourselves those are just some of the key words so module a only has a single audience impact um, but like the common mod and mod b you can always express it in your own ways but the audience impact that they have in mod a in the actual syllabus is a firm ignore reveal or cha challenge or disrupt prevailing assumptions and beliefs so it can just completely ignore them and pretend that those assumptions don't exist it can reveal them and be like hey did you realize that this is how we're looking at this group of people or these um individuals it can affirm them and say you know what those assumptions that you will have is actually correct but a lot of the time it's challenging or disrupting them and it, it depends what text you're doing a lot of the times it is challenging or disrupting them and i wouldn't be surprised if you guys have seen this wording before because this is very common wording for questions and it's the only audience impact that's going to come up so when it comes to writing um, a module a essay keeping the six concepts that we just reviewed in mind is really good because you want to integrate these words throughout especially perspectives and that audience impact so um we've got this question without language there would be no culture and this this is what they always do in mod a a lot of the time they're connecting the two like if it's not going to be language and culture it's going to be language and identity or it's going to be culture and identity like they really like to connect the two because again it's a module on all three um and this one's evaluate the truth of these statements so you're going to say that it's true to a great extent you're going to say it's of significant truth you do because it's an evaluate you have to make that judgment um this is a band six response on um lawson's short story so again if you're doing Lawson, sorry not again this is the first time we're talking about lawson but if you are doing lawson for mod a you are all good to take a screenshot here um if you guys want to have a quick read through the most important thing is that it's using the terminology from both the question but also the rubric um, and it's really transforming the audience impact into more of a personal argument. Um, so if you read the last line, as a result, we are better, we are able to better understand the invariable connection between language and culture, as well as how language can maintain our own perceptions on what it means to be Australian today. It's really gone above and beyond where it's definitely taken what the syllabus has said, um, but then adding in that like personal perception of like what it means to be Australian today just that kind of unique take on it now in terms of strengthening your analysis you want to make sure that your concepts and your evidence and like your quotes are supporting the themes in your body paragraph and they're gearing you towards analysis of the module now key themes in mod a are assimilation class discrimination empowerment prejudice stereotype status marginalization now for some of you these might not apply but most of the common themes are here now, when you're approaching the Mod A essay, um, there's so many different types of questions they can give you. So let's talk about how to fit them. So we've got this question, which is poetry relies primarily on symbolism to create cultural tension. To what extent? So if you were to get this, you'd have to say the symbolism of what? Like you can't just say it is true to a great extent that poetry relies primarily on symbolism to create cultural tension about heritage. Like, okay okay just tell me the question again and i don't even say that in a mean way because i used to do it all the time and i thought like oh i'll just like reword the question in my own words babe you were literally just rewriting the question um and especially for your first line when they're judging you so hard in that introduction and like maybe like you're like you don't know where you are but like what if you're after like a really bad paper no <laughs> but what if you are after like someone um like like a like a, a lower paper and then you just have this opportunity it's this great opportunity for you to stand out and then all you did was start your essay repeating the question we're not gonna risk it we are not gonna risk it um so this is on um translucent jade um for anyone that's studying um the poem collection for mod a um it's got language offers a space for individuals to explore heritage resolving cultural pressures and tensions with the past 
Tan illuminates the ongoing process she's undertaking to accept her cultural background as part of her identity. And you can see already, like, it's got the culture, it's got the identity, it's got the cultural pressures and tension. Um, and by the end, it's bringing up identity again. So it's just, it's just a win, in my opinion. Anyways, in terms of constructing your notes, it's really up to you. I don't like talking about, like, how to do notes and how to study for English because everyone is very different. I feel like on content subjects and for math and the sciences, like, studies kind of, it's kind of all the same. Like, everyone kind of does the very similar things. But for English, it's so different. Like, some people are memorizing essays word for word. Others are memorizing parts of it. Some aren't memorizing at all and they're just constructing notes that they're reading um, and then, yeah, it's really up to you. Um, but if you did want to try this method, which is what a lot of online notes use, I find they've got like the theme and then they've got like all the quotes for that theme or the analysis. And then, sorry about that. And then all the audience impact. And that just makes sure that you're consistently linking back to the module. So that's always an opportunity if you guys wanted to do that. Um, but notes are only useful if you combine them with practice responses. Like you can have so many notes, 27 pages of notes just on mod A. If you do not sit a practice mod A question and you practice writing out that essay and adapting to the question, there's just no point. Notes should always be a starter. I feel like in a lot of subjects, it's like, oh, like my notes, my notes, my notes. Notes should be your starter, but your end point should be practice papers. And I hate to say it because I really did not like sitting past papers especially for English, you know how annoying it is to sit for like two hours and write two essays in a creative. I'm not sure how many of you guys have done any sets of trials yet or if you guys have tried a past paper yet. But like for some of the other subjects, they're like three hour papers. Like you're just going to sit there by yourself. Like I would sit to try and do an English one. But after I finished one essay, I was like, I deserve a snack. I deserve to go on my phone and I'd pause my timer and I just wouldn't even get back to it. Um, and I feel like procrastination is so normal. Um, so with past papers, my advice for it is I don't think you should start doing past papers until you have memorized your quotes and you feel pretty good. Like look at a couple past questions and be like, oh, I feel like I could answer this. I feel like I could answer that. Um, and once you're ready, definitely try it out. But I don't recommend if it's your first time ever doing like a practice response under time conditions at home by yourself, I don't recommend just putting on a two hour time and being like, okay, I'm going to do mod A, mod B and mod C all in one. Um, that's obviously the end goal and I definitely for all of you guys think that if you as long as as long as you do the paper at least once at least once you just know for a fact that you can finish and you have that security going in so you don't have to think oh like what if I don't finish what if I don't finish because in your head you know that you've finished it before and that you're going with the same quotes the same techniques the same analysis and the same arguments so that's one of my um, tips there is that if you know that you might struggle like sitting like a two hour past paper like first time which is very valid just put on a 40 minute timer and only write your mod a essay and just make sure you can write it in 35 to 38 minutes and then you're good you are all good